Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber, and if you are new here, I hope that you will take the time to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and ring that bell. If you are returning, I'm so glad that you're back. So this week, we're going to do some sunflower-themed DIYs for fall. Now, I know we've been doing a lot of themed decor series around here, and I think it's been really fun. Last week was Autumn Harvest, which those were super cute, you guys. I don't know if you missed that one, you got to go watch that one. I'll link it in the description below. But um, if you're here on my channel and you have never met me before and we have never connected, please introduce yourself in the comments. Just say a quick hello. Let me know that you stopped by. And if you're returning, let me know you popped in too. Here's the situation. We're going to be using items from the Dollar Tree and we're also going to be using items from other places. Now you can substitute out what you like. You don't have to use things that I use. In fact, you maybe have not gotten your hands on some of the things I've used. So supplement and uh, think outside the box wherever you can, okay? Now, all these projects will be linked in the description box below through a timestamp, meaning you can just skip ahead. And if we happen to have them on the blog, we will put a blog link also in the description. So don't forget to always look there on my channel. We're updating it often with new blog posts. And if you've not been over to my blog, we break down the whole thing into what we use, where I got it, how it was made. We've got photos over there. We also link you back to this video as well so you can connect with it. And then plus you can pin it on Pinterest. So don't forget to do that, but hop over to themakersmap.com. But let's go ahead and get started with this week's video. And don't forget to let me know which one's your favorite. I would love to know that. Stay tuned for some upcoming Christmas. I do believe this is gonna be our last um, fall video this year. So stay tuned for Christmas that's coming. I know so many of you guys are super excited for that. I know I am. And uh, we'll be sharing the viral pizza pan video as well. So be on the lookout for that one. But thanks again for being here this week. I have nothing else really to share with you other than welcome to my channel. I'm so excited that you are here. I hope you have a great time being inspired by all these things. And let's go ahead and get started with this week's video. <music> Okay, let's get started with our very first project. We're gonna be making this cute guy right here and we're gonna be using some wood shims that I got from the hardware store. And I think I picked these up at the Home Depot and you get a ton of them as you can see. I think you get like 30 of them for like two bucks. It's insane, but they're not all flat. So you, I did alternate them like every other one cause it's like skinny and then thicker on one end. And then I just took some paint sticks, like gallon sticks from the hardware store as well. Cut them down to attach on the backside. Now you can use the wood shims if you want to but because they're not flat like they're flat but they're not even it's thicker and thinner I didn't want to attach them on the back side so all I did was attach the paint sticks with some hot glue and it worked just fine for me and I just pushed down so that it would attach uh, to the paint sticks because they it was like thicker and thinner and then we're using some antique wax from Waverly and I'm just applying this on here pretty generously and I'm using a baby wipe to spread it out now it is a little bit more orangey than I wanted it to be but we're gonna you know we're gonna dry brush this anyway so it doesn't really matter uh, you can use paint if you want to it's completely up to you you can use stain now um, I did want to tell you that the shims are a little rough cut so you might want to sand them before you stain them I am taking some orange paint to this and you guys, I was going to paint the whole thing orange. I was going to do like outlines. I was going to do polka dots. I was going to do so many things to this. And then I was like, no, I'm not. I did not like how it looked when I was doing it. And so I just completely changed my mind throughout the process. And it, I think in the end it looked actually better to be honest with you. So painting the leaf on this thankful and blessed sign that I got at Dollar Tree, um, green, it's a olive green or moss green. It's one of the greens. And then I thought to myself, you know what, why not go in with this yellow? <laughs> so I just was not feeling the polka dots. I did not, I was not feeling like the stitching that I was doing. And so I just went over it. I wish I would have just thought to use the yellow first because it took so many coats of the yellow to cover that orange. So I think I did three coats and I did two different yellows because I just could not get it to cover that orange the way that I wanted it to. But in the end, I think it looked pretty good for what we were going for. And then I just took some of that yellow and added some like detail to the vine. 
Now I'm just dry brushing over this, these wood shims. And because they're more rough cut, you get this cooler finish on there. And I just did a dry brush and I'm just drying it with my heat gun or you can use a hair dryer as well. I am going to glue on this wood cut out right onto the top of there. And then we're going to use the sunflowers that I found at Hobby Lobby as like a border instead of like, I know you've probably seen it where people do like the half wood beads across like, like trim. I wanted to do the sunflowers. So that's what we're going to trim the top and the bottom with. Now I was so lucky to find these would be garlands at the Dollar Tree. I know everybody's been looking for them and could not find them, but I scooped some up and that's what we used as our hanger and we're gluing all these sunflowers on and I started with the middle and just went outward and you can see I think it turned out so cute you will have a little bit of glue strings on there but just pick them off and I think it'll be so adorable if you wanted to make that one so you can let me know what you think of that one but we're gonna go on into this one and I was gonna try my hand at making some fabric sunflowers so I thought why not do like a little sunflower patch kind of pocket thing so I have a round MDF sign from the Dollar Tree and I was able to get a hold of this wallpaper that looks like wood planks and I'm attaching that to the circle to be like our background. Now I'm just taking some burlap also to make our little pocket for this project. And by the way, that wallpaper sticks really good. It's almost the same can, like material feel as the contact paper um, at the Dollar Tree. So... I don't know why they didn't just sell that on the roll. Like, why do you let it make the whole, like, pieces look, look like a placemat? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to explain it to you guys, but maybe you'll agree with me. Like, they should just give us the whole roll. Now, I am making my sunflowers out of um, fabric that I had found at Walmart. Now, you can use something that maybe you found at Dollar Tree. And I'm just doing, like, a zigzag, like a back and forth fan. And I figured I would use my stapler to kind of help me. It didn't really do any good. But I wanted to show you that that's what I did. I just stapled it to hold it in place. And, and I ended up just cutting it. And um, the shape of the petal all at once. So I was able to get more pieces at one time than cutting like individual petals. Like that was just would have been too long. But so I just did like the accordion fan fold. And that's how I got my little petals here. Now I'm just gluing them a like across from each other and I'm just continuing to alternate those steps all the way around and I did that three times so anywhere you see like an in-between from the two petals is where I put a piece of fabric petal on top of my cardboard cutout so yes I used a piece of cardboard to create the foundation of what we were gluing to and then you guys I found this fabric to go in the center and it's the polka dots and I thought it was so precious it was like perfect you can change up your like fabric if you want to but this black and white polka dot fabric I just thought this is got to go with it, it turned out super cute so I just traced out the circle and cut it kind of you know not perfect hot glued it to the center you guys, look at how cute that is. I was so proud of these flowers. They turned out so great. And so I made three of those. And then, like I said, we've got this burlap um, that I got from Hobby Lobby. Now, I did not like how you could see through it. So I took this piece of fabric that I found and I just painted it the color of the burlap ribbon. And well, it's like just a burlap roll. That way you did not see through the burlap to inside the pocket because I was gonna um, we're putting um like the grass skirt for like straw in it and I just didn't want you to be able to see it so this way it stays true to the color of the burlap and it creates like that barrier and I hope that makes sense now this did not really want to stick to the placemat um actually I had to unglue it because I had my placemat going the wrong direction it's not a placemat I keep calling it a placemat it's a piece of wallpaper it's like adhesive but I had decided I wanted my lines to go a certain way so I had to unglue the pocket but anyways I glued it to the back side so it would stick because I could not get the burlap to stick to that uh, wallpaper material now I took these um, pipe cleaners I got them at Dollar Tree and I didn't have any green ones so I just painted them green and now I'm just going to stain these beads in the bowl 
already strong. They come that way from Dollar Tree. If you can score those bonus points for you, uh, it took me ever to find forever to find them, but I did finally get a hold of some of them. So all I'm doing is taking some paint and I'm trying to water it down. I'm going to pour it right inside this bowl. I'm going to put the bowl on top of it and glue it closed so that I could shake it up. Y'all, it's the fastest way to stain your beads. If you've ever seen anybody do them the hard way, you got to try this. Put them in a bowl, add you some paint and water, shake them up, and the, all of them will be stained. And I just kind of pulled them out of the bowl because I didn't want to break the bowl and cut myself. And then I just took a t-shirt rag or like you could take an old cloth or paper towel and I just stabbed off all the paint that was excess. And it doesn't look like they're, they're tinted but if you hold them side by side, you can complete, completely see that they're a different color. And so um, we're putting them around the outside of our circle um, for our sunflower patch sign. I think it's super cute. And we're going to put that grateful sign on there. We're going to match it up to the um, wood beads. And we're going to put some of the grass skirt. It's like the bigger adult size it's a straw skirt. It's a hula skirt is what it is from Dollar Tree. I just had some left over from a project we had done in my private group. I have a, I have a private crafting group. If you want to know about it, you can go to creativehavenvip.com and you can learn how you can become a member too. But we did a project in there with the grass skirt and I had this left over. So I wanted to use it and I thought this would be so cute to put it in there into this little sign. So this is what we got. And I use my excess beads that was left over from wrapping them around as the hanger. And I think it turned out so adorable. You don't have to put the hanger on. Like you could put this on like a plate um, stand, like a display and just kind of prop it up. But I think it turned out really cute. My beads aren't completely straight, but has a spring kind of fall feel. You know, you can dress it up forever you want it to look. But this one here, y'all, is my favorite of the week. I will be honest with you, this one is Presh. Now, I saw an inspiration on Pinterest, and forgive me, I cannot remember who it was. I'm really trying to think really hard. I've tried to go back and find it. I know I saw it on Pinterest, and I was like, oh, I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to put my own spin on it. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that I found this idea and just kind of put my own twist on it. So anyways, I took the house frame from the Dollar Tree and I got this print from, I believe, Michael's or Joanne's. It's like a um, dictionary. It's like a dictionary print. And then we're just going to stain over the frame and kind of darken it up just a little bit so it feels more um, rustic to go with our sunflower uh, topiary pumpkin candy corn looking it's like a, it's like a mashup of all kinds of things. So I found three different sizes of pumpkins at the Dollar Tree. I'm just using my little scraper thingy to cut them in half. And then I use some scissors to kind of flatten it up just a little bit more. Now these, uh, this pumpkin here had a face on the back of it. And so I used the other side of it. And then the other one was just, um, another pumpkin from another bag that I found. Now I'm doing candy corn colors because I felt like it just made sense for fall. And I put a couple coats on the yellow because you can see the yellow is really hard to cover that orange. And then we did uh, the top one will be white. The middle one is orange. And then the bottom one is yellow. And so again, if you're covering orange, you're going to need to do like a bazillion coats of yellow. I think it took me three coats of this. And then we're going to add some character, some distressing with some brown to them. And we're just going to make them look super duper cute. Like I said, we're using three different types of pumpkins for this. And I'm painting them candy corn colors. So you can try this too if you want. I think it would be super cute on the big, big pumpkins. Like to do a candy corn topiary color. It's not really candy corn. It's the colors of candy corn. For like an outside front porch thing, like on a larger scale, that would be so adorable. I really should, I should really do that for my front porch. I would just happen to think about that. But uh, this is our last video for fall this year. We're going to start moving into Christmas. So if I get around to it, I might upload my fall front porch. I know I did that last year and um, you'll just be able to see the way that I did my porch this year. But we're using some Spanish moss for this and we are going to just kind of layer our pumpkins on top of that. Now I am mod podging these pumpkins to 
the scrapbook paper and I did add a little tiny bit of hot glue because I did not want my seraphim to melt but at least the Mod Podge stuck to the paper and I didn't have any issues with the hot glue it just don't use a lot of it and I did the Mod Podge and the hot glue and then in between each pumpkin I added a little bit of Spanish moss and then the one pumpkin that I had cut up, I used the stem from for the top pumpkin. And I think it just turned out adorable. Now, I had to paint that one because it was, you know, a weird brownish color. And I so I added a little bit of greenish black to it to kind of make it look like a stem. Now, I found these sunflowers at the Dollar Tree. Maybe they're still in your store. And I just left them on the stem, like the little wire, and started sticking them into the sign that I was making. Now, this is more of like a leaner. It's not like you can hang it if you want to, but I made this to be specifically like a leaning sign. And I put in the sunflowers and I did not like all of them yellow. So I pulled out some and painted them white because I felt like that made more sense. And it gave it a little bit of depth and dimension. I added in a little bit of greens. And you guys, this one is my favorite this one's my favorite of the week. And then I just added a little bit of that yellow distress or yellow. It's white. <laughs> I added a little bit of the white uh, paint to just kind of distress the frame. And this is my favorite. I love it so much. And again, I don't know who did this originally, but it gave me that idea and I had to show it to you guys. So this is our last one of this week of the season that is fall. And I know this one's like a bold this one's going to be bold, but we're going with the sunflower theme. If you noticed this week on our themes this year, we did themes this fall. So I thought that was something fun to do. Now I did have this round from Dollar Tree and I'm using a napkin that I had, uh, put, I had put together these napkin bundles for fall. And y'all, like I said, we, I think I said this in the other video, like we sold out of the napkin bundles in like eight days. There was, it was crazy. So we do have a Christmas wait list going right now for nap for napkins for Christmas. So if you want to get on that wait list to be the first to know when they come available, the link will be in the description. So you can do that, or you can go to uh, my website, shopthemakersmap.com. It's right there at the top for you to see how you can get on the list. Now I'm using that napkin. I painted it white because I really wanted that white to pop. And then I just used my ceram wrap and my rolling pin. And then I added a Dollar Tree grapevine wreath to the outside. Now I thought, how can you combine fall farmhouse, sunflowers, harvest, and all the things together for this piece here? And so I painted this windmill black. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. Now, I will tell you, I'm making this full, but you could change up the sunflowers to be something else if you wanted to incorporate that windmill into this. Like, if you like this idea, you could change the background from sunflowers to something else. Now, I love this ribbon that I get from Hobby Lobby, and I thought, we got to do a bow with this. We just have to uh, do the buffalo check with the sunflowers. I felt like it had a great feel. And I struggle to make bows, so I just like piecing it together. I will hot glue pieces, just tie it up. I don't do well with the tails, so I just kind of make my own. And then we are adding a hanger to this, just so we can hang it. It's not like a super big hanger. And then we're attaching, oh, the hanger is twine. We're attaching the bow, and then I'm adding in some of these um, lamb's ear leaves into the grapevine wreath. And I'm distressing up my windmill and we're going to glue this sucker on and this will finish out our project. I would love to know what you think about this week's projects. I hope you enjoyed them and let me know which one is your favorite and I will see you guys on the next video.